Is the Kundalini energy demonic? Everybody wants to know if the Kundalini is evil. Well, it depends. What do you call demonic? What do you call evil? And it also depends on who you're asking and who's telling you about the Kundalini. Now, let's start with the premise that Kundalini energy is demonic. And let's just imagine that the Kundalini energy is demonic. It's only demonic if the spiritual organization that you subscribe to has conditioned you to stay away from anything that did not originate from them, then that would make it demonic because your spiritual organization has classified anything outside of its teachings as demonic. And if that's you, stay away from Kundalini energy. Why are you even watching this video? In order to understand anything, you have to understand that nothing really means anything outside the meaning that we give it. Whatever meaning we give it colors the thing that we're giving meaning to. For instance, I can look at that tree right there and say that tree is demonic. I can call anything demonic. If the spiritual organization that I subscribe to tells me that it is demonic for me to watch cartoons, then in that instance, the cartoon is demonic. But let's take it even a step further. Is it demonic outside of your spiritual organization telling you that it is demonic? That's the real question. If my spiritual organization did not tell me that said thing was demonic, would I naturally conclude that the thing was demonic? Would I even have the idea of demonic in my vocabulary? Would I even think about anything being demonic if I had not been told that this thing was demonic from my spiritual organization? Those are the real questions. You have to separate the thing from the organization telling you about the thing. And that's how you get the real question. And then you can ask yourself, well, why would someone perceive the kundalini to be demonic? Why would they even perceive it to be demonic in the first place? That's another question. Very valid question. Why would they perceive it to be? And I'm going to let you sit with those questions and then I'm going to shift my attention just a little bit. Let's entertain the idea that Kundalini is just a name. That's all it is, is a name that somebody gave it. But what they're describing is an energy. And you can ask yourself, is energy demonic? Outside of the walls of your spiritual organization, is energy in and of itself demonic? Is wind 
demonic because wind is energy. Is the sun demonic because the sun is energy as well? Is electricity demonic because electricity is energy as well? And if you answer truthfully, you have to answer that the answer is no. Energy isn't demonic. The sun isn't demonic. Wind isn't demonic. Matter isn't demonic. And why would Kundalini be classified as demonic? Now, could we use each of those things for bad reasons? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes. You can use wind for not so good reasons. You can use electricity for not so good reasons. You can use the the, the sun power for not so good reasons. Everything in this world can be used for good or not so good reasons. And that's the same thing that you have to apply to the idea of the Kundalini energy. You can have a good experience with the Kundalini energy, or you can have a not so good experience with the Kundalini energy. It's all about the person tapping in to that particular energy. So I want to talk more about why would a person experience a negative or have a negative experience when they are activating the Kundalini? Well, if you have been told that, let's just imagine you've been told that you are a sinner and that there is a devil and that anything that is not coming from your savior is demonic. When you activate the Kundalini energy and you feel this presence that you've never felt before, you might be convinced that you are, you are being possessed by a demonic entity because you don't even understand what you are experiencing. You've automatically giving it a definition, a bad definition. But you can have that same experience and have been told a positive ideology about the kundalini or energy or whatever you want to call it. And you will have a positive experience with the same energy. It's about the mind coloring the experience that's taking place. Now, when you really understand what the Kundalini is, it's just raw energy, raw, pure, raw, untamed energy is what the Kundalini is. It is, it is the source within you, which the source, the source is in every cell of your body, but down at the bottom, at the base of your root is where all of that raw potential is stored. In my last video, I talked about that's where your sexual energy is stored as well. And that sexual energy is some wild energy. So when you activate this sexual energy or this Kundalini energy outside of the container of sex, you might freak out if you've never heard anything like it before or anything about it before, or if you've heard only negative things about it, you might freak out. But if you've been educated to understand that it's just raw energy, you'll automatically understand that you get to color that energy in any way you desire. And so for me, because I was not fearful of the Kundalini, because I started to understand that at its core, everything is energy anyway. 
when I had my Kundalini awakening, although it was very different from anything I'd ever experienced, I knew that I was safe. I knew that all was well. I knew that this energy that I experienced was not coming from some type of entity outside of me. I knew that I'd awakened something inside of me. And that's another thing. When you start understanding that the Kundalini energy is already inside of you anyway, all ideas of the Kundalini being demonic leaves your mind because if you admit that the Kundalini is demonic, you also have to admit that you are also demonic because the Kundalini energy is already inside of you. It's just something that you're waking up. And if you admit that the Kundalini energy is demonic, you also have to admit that sex is demonic. So all you have to do is walk it backwards. Walk it backwards from the finish line, walk it back to the start. Just walk the question backwards. Just break it all down. And ask yourself these questions, these simple questions that most people won't ask themselves. Where is the Kundalini coming from? Nothing can go into you that is not already inside of you. And then if it's already inside of you, then it is you. Your experience in relationship to the thing that you activate inside of you is based off of your own psyche. Again, if you have more of a religious psyche, then you're, you probably will have more of a fearful experience when you activate the Kundalini. But when you start understanding that everything is energy, all thoughts, for me at least, went away uh, very quickly of this thing that I activated inside of me being demonic. So hopefully by now, you have dispelled any notion that the kundalini is demonic. Unless you're calling yourself demonic, and then that's, that's, that's on you. Now, here's what happens when you activate the kundalini. It, it will affect your psyche. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a negative experience. The reason why it's going to affect your psyche is because for the most part, most people see themselves as a name with a body. A name with a body. They see themselves as Tom and this is my body. Or they see themselves as Mike and this is my body or Jonah, and this is my body, or Sally, and this is my body. I don't know anybody named Sally, (laughs) but most people see themselves as, you know, a pretty egoic version of themselves. They see themselves as a name, a body, and then what they do for a living and the role they play in society. That's it for the most part. And When you activate the Kundalini, immediately you become keenly aware that you are more than that. You are more than your name. You are more than your body. You are more than what you do for a living. You are more than the role you play in society. You now know that you are more than this physical, man-made construct that you perceive yourself to be on a consistent basis. And because they, and because most people only see themselves as that, you know, a lot of people say they see themselves as a spirit. Most people don't believe that. They don't really believe that because they're scared of everything spiritual. How are you spiritual if you are afraid of anything remotely spiritual that is outside the realms of your spiritual organization. 
a.k.a. religion. You're fearful. So you don't really see yourself as a spirit anyway. Because if you saw yourself, if you really saw yourself as a spirit, the kundalini wouldn't even affect you like that. It wouldn't even scare you like that. But because you're scared of the kundalini, it means that you, 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 with their mouth, you say that you believe you are a spirit and that you have eternal life. But deep down inside, you see yourself as a name, a body with a title. Which is why kundalini scares you. But when you experience the kundalini, automatically you become aware, like you know for sure now there's more going on than what I previously believed to be going on. There's more going on in life and there's more going on with me. I am now aware that there's other levels. I'm aware that there are other levels. So this is why the kundalini affects the psyche of most people. And for a person that has a really, really fearful belief system, it rattles their central nervous system and causes them to spaz out. Because now this other thing that they think is coming from outside of them is now inside of them, and they are freaking the heck out. They don't even know that the kundalini was inside of them all the time. It was just asleep. It was asleep. So before you, act, and, the, and this is for people that are not activating the kundalini consciously. It's a little different for people that activate the kundalini consciously. People that activate the kundalini consciously already are kind of primed to this idea. They're pre-exposed to the idea of the kundalini. So they are a little bit more open-minded. And even some of those people freak out because it's an energy unlike anything they've ever experienced before. And I'll tell you right now, my kundalini is activated right now during this video, which is why I can do the video and talk about the kundalini while I am driving down the interstate with no notes in front of me because I am channeling the energy of the kundalini as I talk to you. Now, before you consciously activate the kundalini, ask yourself, why do you want to activate the kundalini? Why, why do you even want to activate it? What's your reason? for wanting to activate the kundalini. Why? Why are you poking around? Really, ask yourself that. Why do you even want to activate the kundalini? Really, think about that. Why? And if you don't know why you want to activate the Kundalini, then I would advise you not to activate the Kundalini. If you know why you want to activate the Kundalini and want to know how to activate the Kundalini, this part of the video is for you. If you know why you want to activate the Kundalini, please understand that your reason for activating the kundalini should be because when you activate the kundalini, it's going to make you a more powerful person. It's not going to necessarily make you invincible, but it'll make you more powerful than you currently are, especially in the container of manifesting. If you want to manifest at a rapid level, if you want to increase the capacity to manifest bigger and better things, then activating the Kundalini will assist you in that. 
If you want to become more intuitive or more psychic, activating the Kundalini will do that as well. If you want to have more energy, activating the Kundalini will do that as well. But I must warn you that also activating the Kundalini will cause you to have more spiritual downloads. And those spiritual downloads might cause you to become tired quicker because you're downloading so much in information from the universe or from the atmosphere. You're downloading it so fast and you're consciously aware of the fact that you're downloading it. And that might make you a little sluggish. There are times where I feel like I've downloaded so much in a day that I'm just a little sleepy when it's all said and done. Right. So you need to know that if you want to become better in bed, activating the Kundalini can help you out with that. If you want to attract more money, more wealth, activating the Kundalini can help you with that. If you want to channel, activating the Kundalini can help you with that. And if you don't know what channeling is, then ignore what I just said. If you want to, and I don't know if I've said this already, but increase your intuition or your psychic abilities, then activating the Kundalini will help you out with that as well. If you want to become more peaceful inside of yourself, activating the Kundalini can help you with that. And there's a reason why I said can, because also activating the Kundalini can disturb you, can disturb your inner peace because the Kundalini, once it's activated, it simply wants to flow through you. And if you have any emotional blockages inside of you, it's going to disturb you because it's trying to burst through that blockage that you have. So it's very important that before you activate the Kundalini, you release any emotional blockages that you have inside of yourself so that you will be spiritually and emotionally in alignment after you activate the Kundalini. And if you want to release any emotional uh, baggage, there's a way to do that. But first, you need to know whether or not you have emotional baggage. And the only way to know if you have emotional baggage is to reach for a higher feeling and see what you feel as you try to reach for that higher feeling. If you try to reach for a higher feeling and you feel resistance, if you feel fear or stress or worry or anxiety, then it means you have an emotional blockage and you need to deal with that before you activate the Kundalini because the Kundalini is kind of like an avalanche. When you activate the Kundalini, that joker wants to burst through and it could disturb you emotionally. So that's why I said that the Kundalini can give you inner peace. Now, if you have cleared all your emotional blockages or the vast majority of your emotional blockages, then activating the Kundalini will make you more of a peaceful individual. But you need to know that you're clear, okay? And I... I hope I'm doing a good job at emphasizing just how important that is. Now, if you do have emotional blockages, one thing you can learn to do is to locate the emotional blockage inside of your body. Focus on that area of your body by placing your hand there, closing your eyes and repeating, I forgive you until the emotional blockage dissolves. Once the emotional blockage dissolves, all of a sudden you're going to feel freedom in that area of your body. And when you feel freedom in that area of your body or when you feel lighter in that area of your body, it means that it's safe for the kundalini energy to flow through that part of your body. So forgiving yourself or loving yourself is another thing that can help you remove the emotional blockage that you might have so that the kundalini energy can flow through you freely. 
For instance, right now, as I drive, the Kundalini energy is activated. I can feel it from the bottom of my root to the top of my crown. And every now and then I feel a little bit of resistance. And all I do is repeat to myself, I love you or I forgive you. And I'm doing that silently and automatically that part of my body that uh, started to feel a little tense starts to subside and open up. And that's what you want. You want the Kundalini energy to be able to flow through you freely. This is what it's about. It's about creating, uh, it's about creating space so that the Kundalini can flow naturally. Also repeating, I love you over and over again can open up your pipelines so that the kundalini energy can flow through you. Once you do all of that, it is dang near impossible for you to have a bad experience when you activate the kundalini. But I tell you, activating the kundalini energy is going to make you more empathic. It's going to make you even appear to be more psychic. It's going to make you feel everything from everyone and everywhere you go. So you have to have clearing techniques that you remember on a consistent basis so that when you start to pick up this energy that you perceive to be negative from people, places, and things that you come across, you can quickly remove that negative energy and so that it doesn't get stuck in your biological pipeline. So this is why it's important to know how to clean and clear the negative energy that you feel because it can be very overwhelming if you are not careful. But I warn you, activating the Kundalini energy will make you very powerful. Just know what to expect. Watching this video and listening to this video over and over again will help you better understand what to expect and how to handle what you experience when you activate the kundalini energy. It's my desire that you activate this energy and experience it for yourself because it is unlike anything you have ever felt before. I dive deep into this inside of the mastermind. My mastermind group is called mindmastersociety.com. And it's cheap to join for right now. It is cheap to become a member of the Mind Master Society. Every course, every piece of content inside of the Mind Master Society is something that will help you activate your Kundalini energy. Even if I'm not necessarily saying the Kundalini energy in that piece of content, if you do the work, it will help you activate the Kundalini energy. All you have to do is know what the system is. You just need to know the system. What is the system? What's the formula? Once you know the formula, you can activate this energy and keep it activated. My Kundalini energy has been accessible to me since I first activated it. It's been accessible to me since then. And I have enjoyed playing with it tremendously. I use the same energy to attract business, to attract money. I use the same energy to attract my twin flame. I use the same energy to keep myself healthy. I don't take medicine. I never go to the doctor and I'm 100% healthy all the time. I never get sick. I'm always healthy. I always feel good. When I even had, during the pandemic, when I had the, what you call it, and I'm not going to say the name, but I even used the Kundalini energy to overcome uh, that very, very fast. So I love the Kundalini energy. I have made it one of my most precious tools that I activate every day every single day. If you want more, if you have more questions about what the Kundalini is, how to activate it, how to use it to manifest 
All you got to do is let me know below this video. But if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, you need to become a part of my mastermind group. That's mindmasterssociety.com. Mindmasterssociety.com. It's the Kundalini energy, baby. Talk to you soon. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, too. Because you never know what I'm going to allow to channel through me.